when was like the first time that you went with, was a, had you been to Hawaii before, Brock? I had never been to Hawaii. Oh. So the first summer we started dating. Putting on the moves, taking you to know, Hawaii. I know, I yeah. know. <laughs> it was, it got serious by fall and he wanted me to come home and meet his family. Yeah. And I was like, great, because I was in Chicago. Chicago is, ooh, dark, gray, cold. Yeah. I was uh, working as an associate, so I was dog tired. Yeah. So I thought, ooh, a romantic getaway with my new beau to Hawaii. <laughs> and so we go, but I didn't realize that it was a family trip. I mean, his yeah. grandparents were there, his mom was there, his little sister. I'm thinking- That can be intimidating. Well, I'm thinking uh, the only thing I knew about Hawaii was the Brady Bunch. You know, when they, they I didn't even know Hawaii. that. I just you knew didn't know that. I forget generationally. I just, no, you no, I, I know of that. I didn't watch it as religiously because I there were reruns by them, uh -huh. but I didn't know that. But I just knew the the necklace. Yeah, thing. the lace, yeah, the lace, the yeah. Hawaiian shirts. That was yeah. the Brady Bunch uh, in Hawaii. Okay. And so I'm yeah. expecting. I love you know, that. That's what you knew. <laughs> tiki torches yeah. and you know Waikiki and yeah. Mai Tais and sunset walks and. You know, we got there and it was a family visit. We were in his grandparents' apartment, which wasn't near the beach. Uh, yeah. You know? <laughs> we were doing jigsaw puzzles. 60 Minutes was on, just like at my, my grandparents' house. Yeah. We were. You could have like been anywhere. We were eating tuna fish yeah. on TV trays. Another moment tuna fish. I, I, it's Look, it's a quick meal. <laughs> with sweet pickles, you well, know? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The drinking's a little sweet, yeah. So it was a lovely visit, yeah. but you know, in that youthful romance, I was disappointed because because I, I thought, you know, we were just gonna be he and I, and you know, I tell the story because as I tell young people looking for love, you think you're looking for Mai Tais and Sunset Beaches, but yeah. what you really want is a guy that's gonna show up for his family. 100%. And that's what he was doing. That's what he yeah. was showing me yeah. on that first visit. You got lucky there. So wait, y'all just, is it 30th anniversary? Is that what y'all 30 just... years October. Oh, yeah. oh. What did you do to celebrate? And look how great y'all look there. Aww. You got your beach moment. We got, the, there we did. We got yeah. a walk on the beach, but we recreated our honeymoon. Um, and our honeymoon, I didn't want to go anywhere crazy. We couldn't afford it, number one. Um, so we rented a car, went to the West Coast, started in San Francisco, and just drove along the coast. Yeah. And stopped in really nice places. I That's what that. we did in October. He re recreated all of that. But now we were doing it with a motorcade and secret service. Yeah, slightly it was different. A little different, but yeah. it was the thought that counted. I mean, in that picture you see on the beach, there's like 12 guys in the that back. That you don't see. Right, we're just, they're trying to hide. Is but that... it's like, we see you Is... behind the rock. Is that <laughs> annoying? Like, that would be hard. I mean, you know, for all anybody in the public eye, you get photos taken everywhere, but just to have people around all the time, that's hard. You know, you get adjusted to it, and our secrets, the Secret Service agents, they are like our family. Um, all right. And so... But I love my family, but I also like being alone. I know, yeah. I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> I always, t and I've had to tell the girls this, that, you know, throughout the White House, it's like, you don't complain about this. This is what service is, you know? Yeah. This is part of it. It was an honor to serve, and you deal, there's shortcomings that they're sacrifices. Come with it. Well. They're sacrifices, yeah. but, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna complain when people are yeah. serving in the military and they have real hardships in their military families and families who are struggling. I am not gonna complain about Secret Service. Absolutely not. But if you just <laughs> wanted to, like, make out a little on the beach, I don't want someone watching me. <laughs> well, it's, it's like, true. They, they tend to turn away. They look away. Like, if they're look. not, change those people out. That's right. Um, That's right. So, speaking of looking great, y'all look so great in that. So, um, on your recent press tour, you said that you didn't feel comfortable wearing natural hairstyles while mm -hmm. in the White House. So, what exactly do you mean by that? You know, a lot of people don't remember as the first black family in the White House, yeah. you know, the, the journey there wasn't smooth. You know, there were people who tried to... I remember the news. Yeah. ...turn us into others, you know? Yeah, division. And so we had to overcome a lot of that. And mm -hmm. so much was uh, uh, read into gestures we would make, like a fence bump was turned into a terrorist fist jab. You know, and what? so I was like, braids, people aren't gonna understand braids, you know, sadly, not at least at that time. And I didn't want that to be a distraction. There was too much to do, you know, there was, there was healthcare to be, at, yeah. right. Um, now, fortunately, you know, the more people are showing what it means to be beautiful, what hair can look like. I'm yeah. grateful to this generation that is owning every part of themselves. Absolutely. So. 
we're now a bold generation, and it's and, good. And, and every, we need it yeah, because we need to create a broader definition of who's American, who counts, what beauty yeah. is. Um, it only helps our kids who are, we don't know who they're gonna become, right? And we wanna make sure there's a space for them, whoever they choose to Why be. Why limit them? Yeah, limit like them? I think is, it should be celebrated. And I think you're right, this younger generation is very much into that. Yeah. And yeah. it shouldn't be politicized, you know? Yeah. You, most kids who are wearing tattoos and piercings, they've got long nails. It's not about their, you know, their value system is about individuality. But back in the day, like, tattoos was, like, so bad. It was, well, yeah. and, and I it, came it, home it, with one, and my mom just kind of looked at it and was like, that's new. Well, it was the same thing. <laughs> my generation didn't, you know, we didn't, tattoos meant something totally different. I know. We used to threaten our kids that if you get a tattoo, we're going to get exactly the same kind and show it on TikTok or whatever. <laughs> take the cool away. Take the cool all the way. Um, That's a but, good parenting skill. Right. <laughs> Just like, we're going to make it so uncool. Uh, Barack Obama's going to have a heart <laughs> on his shoulder. <laughs> You know, it's like... That's the greatest mom <laughs> tip of the day. We have another question from another Rad Mama viewer. So Tracy from New York asked, I was raised by a single mother and worked all through high school. I paid for my own college, and today I'm a successful business owner. My daughters are living a life I could only dream of. A lot of us relate to this, we, Tracy. Even so, I worry about them all the time. I worry they're not learning the tough lessons that made yeah. me who I am. Yeah. I also worry that the world they're growing up in is just too different from mine. Mm. What advice can you give me? That's a loaded question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think all of us feel that way because we want, you want each, you know, you want to do better, your family well, to and, do better, but it's, and I don't we all know worry about, about you. That. It's like, uh, my, my life is so different <laughs> from how I grew up. I mean, there what? wasn't the plan to yeah. live in the White House, to be yeah. touring. I mean, that wasn't- the, That wasn't on your to-do list? The, those weren't the, <laughs> the people we came from, right? Yeah. Um, so, but I loved my upbringing. I loved the hard knocks. It I made loved me who the, I am. Exactly, yeah. so I definitely get that because my kids grew up in the White House. Yeah. They grew up with security, you yeah. know? So and do we, mine, that that's is not, not normal. Our, that's not, yeah. Exactly, so yeah. I spent all eight years just trying to take stuff away from them. It's like, don't make their bed, <laughs> uh, having housekeeping. It's like, go, don't go in their rooms. Yeah. They have to know how to make their beds. But so I, I understand, I think we all understand those worries. If you have, if you've grown up with a certain set of values, mm -hmm. you want, and, and your life is, is noticeably different, you know, Here's what I experience is that kids are watching us. They watch what we do, not what we give them, you know? Mm -hmm. And we can't be so afraid of the world that they're gonna enter into because it may be different for us, but it won't be for them. Um, those are our fears, once again, taking over. Mm -hmm. um, I found that if you give your kids love, if they feel seen by you, if you don't parent from guilt, you know, if you give them boundaries and discipline, it doesn't matter whether they grow up in the White House or whether they grow up in the little bitty apartment I did on 74th and Euclid. Mm -hmm. My girls have been watching their, me and Barack, how we operate in the world, how we treat other people. Uh, they That's have had way more than we do, but they know right and wrong. They know what we care about. And I would just say, don't worry about who you become. If you're doing those things for your kids, they're gonna be okay. They may slip, you know, they may do things that you need to pull them back on, but you gotta see who they're gonna become and be there to advise them as they go. Yeah. Um, I think that's all we can do. I, I think also like, Coming back to the small things, like I, my kids are doing laundry. They're six and eight. They're doing laundry my and they're kids, taking out trash with me. My kids did that the same thing. They, they had to clean their rooms. Those small they things, had to, like mm -hmm. to make them be accountable. Or they like, had jobs. Yeah. Um, each of them had to have a job. Didn't need a job, you know, yeah. but they had but to have a important. job. that's important. Like I needed the jobs, like mm -hmm. whenever I had so them. So did I. Yeah. <laughs> but like for them, I'm like, you want, because yeah. I talked to my my girl, Is she? I swear, she's going on 20, she's eight. But like, <laughs> but she's like already wants a job. She wants to do that. I'm like, you do you want that because mm -hmm. you that's how you socially you like find friendships you that's, right. that's like all those things are so important and getting your own check we all remember when you first got your mm -hmm. own paycheck I I won the lottery yeah. it was like a yeah. hundred dollars and I was like oh ah, what am I gonna although do my it? kids were like <laughs> what's this taxes thing <laughs> You know? well, I'll tell you I was what. like, yeah, I forgot to tell you, don't add it up completely, yeah. you know, when they saw taxes Jeez. taken out. It's like, yeah, that's life. You know? And then we had to explain why taxes were important because yeah. I don't want them growing up thinking that they shouldn't 
pay yeah. their fair share even as they we yeah. also even make them talk to the accountant to work through to learn how money to manage management. their money. That's to, important. You know, if they're calling me because they've lost a credit card, which happens once or twice, uh, you'll you'll get there. Good too. lord. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, but we try to make them handle things. They they each shared a car uh, when when they were growing up because they had to learn how to drive. But mm -hmm. I made them. I, first of all, I wanted them to know how to drive. It's like you you cannot leave the White House and not know how to drive. Because yeah. they were driven around by Secret Service agents. Yeah. Now they have to take care of the car. They're still sharing it. Oh well, Malia got a job. She bought her car. So now they get each it, have Malia. She bought a car. <laughs> yeah, that's a big move. I remember but my first. They car have by. to learn how to. You know, I, I, I said, "Do you know about a tune-up?" I just had this conversation with Sasha. She's like, "What's a tune-up?" And I was like, "Oh, oh Lord," you know. I was like, "Well, here, look it up. You know, you got to figure out. You got to look in the owner's manual. You know, there's so many things yeah. they're learning how to do." Um, but you know, I'm proud to say I can change there. a tire and change your oil. See, like I, I yeah, <laughs> I'm like, and thank you, Matt Metters. It was, it was, it was my Matt, friend Matt Metters from Matt from high school. He actually taught me how to. I was like, "You do what? You drain the whole? Is that a waste?" Like, what I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "He actually taught me that." But now it's weird because there's electric cars. So now things are even different you know, now. That's but true. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. The world is changing. So we have to parent our kids to be prepared for the world they're going to live in. Yeah. Not the world that we live in. You know, I mean, I we think can it's empowering. That. Yeah. I feel empowered. Like I've actually had to change my, my, I, I'm not going to call this person out, but I, this dude sat in my car uh -huh. in the rain uh -huh. while I changed the tire. Oh. It was not a dude I was dating, don't worry. Okay. But like, it was like, but I was like, it was one of those things that was like, I wasn't mad at him, I was just, I'm, you're pathetic. Yeah. But like, but it was empowering. I think it's empowering to show your kids that and how they feel safe and secure on their own when they go out and Especially, they know how to do things. Especially uh, young girls. Yeah, you absolutely. Want them, I want my girls to be whole independent people. I want them to be able to cook, clean, mm -hmm. change a tire, earn a living before they even think about coupling up with somebody else. Yeah, because well, because that's also finding you, out who you are and exactly. what you like. Your, exactly, yeah. so mm -hmm. I, there's a whole chapter on, on that as well. Yeah, so, I need that chapter. Book. I can't cook. <laughs> you mentioned knitting, Yeah. so you learned to knit, right? It was, it was one of my, my uh, COVID, COVID things. Uh, meditative skills. I didn't know how to knit beforehand, although I, I grew up in a house full of sewers and knitters, my great grandmother, my- Yeah, my sister can. Yeah, did yeah. You, when did you do something maybe you were actually proud of? You know, the minute that I, <laughs> the minute I could make something that somebody could use, the first useful thing I, ah. I knitted was a halter top for Sasha. And she loved I it. Love I, I did it for both girls. But there's something about doing something with your hands and giving it to your child. Yeah. Who loved it. She wears it all the time. Malia does, too. They love their... So I was like, oh, I can make a thing. Yeah. Um, it, it is a very... I learned to sew. I'm mm -hmm. not great at it. But I made my daughter a top when she was like, I don't know, like three, two or three. Yeah. And I made this top and I was like, I should be a designer. This right. is so cute. <laughs> it was my first thing I ever made. And I thought it was so magical. I'm so glad I took a picture. Because then later on I was like, eh, not so I mean, <laughs> I think I But made it's a, magical. I you made feel a empowered. baby cardigan that I gave as a oh. gift. The minute I could actually give somebody a gift. Yeah. Oh, that's the, yeah, that's the first. That is good. That's the first. Well, it's actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, but the thing about knitting for me is that it quieted that worrying mind over Sewing for COVID. Me. You yeah. know, I mean, when we were all just spinning in our heads, wondering, will this world fall apart? Um, I found again the small act of creating something mm -hmm. and knit and stitch and stitch and knit that helped to clear the clutter. Mm -hmm. of the noise that was coming in, and it pulled me out of depression. Uh, and so it's a tip that I give to, to people. Mm -hmm. It's like, we need to get connected with our hands. Sometimes we rely on our heads too much. We think we can think our way out of sadness and think our way out of anxiety. And sometimes we just need to do something. You know, yeah. get up, take a shower, make a thing, plant mm -hmm. a seed, bake a cake. You know, those little things, we underestimate them, but it's those habits, learning something new, that keeps me settled in a way that I didn't expect. Me neither. I started gardening for that. Like, I yeah. was just like, after having two kids, I was just like, ooh, this is a lot. And yeah. I was like, just getting my hands dirty and using them and yeah. growing something. Like, it, it does, it, it, you know, you feel like you're starting to be a cliche, that cliche person that gets older, and you're like, I'm 
you know, making quilts and I'm gardening. But we but make it, but fun it, of that stuff. But, but it's our, really our, healthy. Exactly. Yeah. We need to get our kids off the phones yeah. more and more and get them working with their hands and doing real stuff. Agreed. I'm like, yeah. every night this week, I've been like, no, you're not touching yeah. the iPad. We've been yeah. doing crafts all week. Yeah. I'm like, we're doing That's something. That's so good. But it's fun. And yeah. it not only is fun to do like for yourself on your own, because it's good for your mental clarity, I think. Um, it's a great therapeutic kind of thing. But also with your kids, they start talking about things that they normally wouldn't talk about because they're doing a task and they're yeah. just not even yeah. thinking twice about it. So it creates a really cool bond, I think, too.